They're easily infiltrated and you know broken apart if it's a genuine organization. It's kind of from being a So, uh, that's your thesis with the octopus, with your new book? Well, in octopus, you know what I do is uh, um, you have the, the planners and uh, you have the executioners. Well, build a record with like a certain level of executioners. Uh, Above them, there's other organizations, other secret societies who are really secret because nobody knows who they are. And one of them is, is Octopus, although in the real world it's not called Octopus, it has another name. I just called it Octopus because I've been told not to call it by its real name. And uh, uh, it's a novel, although, <coughs> excuse me, although 80% of what I say in that novel is absolutely true. There's five different lines of you know, investigative journalism, and each one of them could be a three, four hundred page book, but again I was told not to even think about publishing as a as a journalism. Uh, do you think that politicians have any power left? Well, you know, on the international stage, no. You know, <coughs> you have the president of Greece, who is a member of Bilderberg, and he's being told what to do in his country. You have Tapatero, who is the president of this country, you know, who goes to this meeting and being treated like, you know, some, some naughty, you know, six-year-old boy. And he's a president, you may not like it. He's not a you know, he's not a chief of a tribe, an African tribe. He's a president of a country. And he's being treated like, you know, a naughty little six year old boy. Because, you know Why do you say that? Well, because that's what I that, that's what my sources told. Me. And what did they do to him? Well they don't hit him, that's for sure. But they certainly, you know, reject out of hand his proposal. About what? Well, they, the proposal obviously he came to today's meeting, aside from giving the opening address, which is a very normal thing in Bilderberg meetings for the president of the country. <laughs> where the meetings have been held. He also took the opportunity, you know, the unique opportunity to convince this very powerful group of people, you know, that Spain has a future and this situation can be solved because Bilderberg was saying, you know, get your house in order because we don't have the money to save you. You know, that's one of the things that they realize. It's on the agenda which we already have. Is they realize that the 750 billion dollars, aside from the fact that it's absolutely illegal, what they did according to 1992 Maastricht Treaty, absolutely illegal. They simply don't have the money to do it more. You know, they need 800 billion dollars to do this. Well, it wasn't that he was rejected. You know, these people are blind. You have to give it to them. But, you know, but he certainly wasn't. Uh, and let's say they were cool to this performance. Who's, who's inside? Is there the Ministros? Can what can French, French personnel do? Well, Kushner is certainly there. Uh, uh, the president of AXA Insurance Company is there. I can't remember his name right now. Um, de Castre. De Castre, de Castre, exactly. He's there as well. And I have a list on my computer, but it's encrypted military computer. I need to decrypt it, and until I get to a secure internet location, I can't open it. So, but I'll. Tomorrow. I'm sure she is. She's always here. Okay. Uh, so what are the other subjects they're going to discuss? Well, there's, uh, there's ten subjects on the agenda. One has to do with Greece, the other one has to do with Euro. <coughs> the other one is a very interesting subject. They, it literally says, do we have the institutions to deal with the current crisis on the world stage? It's a very interesting question if you analyze it. Then another point uh, deals with Afghanistan, you know, uh, solutions and, and problems and solutions. There's only one thing in Afghanistan of any value, that's drugs. You know, and if you realize that drugs is the lubricant of the entire world economy, well, you know what these people are going to be talking about. One of the reasons you can't eradicate drugs is because drugs are all la laundered through Wall Street, which is how, you know, it is always working. You know, so <laughs> imagine that. So, Afghanistan, institutions, Spain, Greece, Euros, I guess, what else? Euro, the, uh, the, the last point on the agenda is uh, <laughs> is uh, alternative scenarios to the United States dollar, which is something they've been working for a long, very, very long time. They're trying to destroy the dollar because by destroying the dollar, all the you know the denominated credit is in dollars. You destroy the world economy. This is exactly what they want. One of the well, they must you know, destroy the world economy because again, you're talking about transfer of wealth. You see, if you go back to 1929, which was called the Great Depression, which really wasn't the Great Depression at all. It was simply a transfer of wealth, you know, to, uh, money is not water, it doesn't evaporate. So if you and I lose it, somebody has to gain it. So, you know, it has been more than cruel in the past 70 years of history, you know, since the Great Depression, that what we've lost, our monies, our equities, our homes, our, you know, what little value we had, was actually taken over by the Loebs and the Coons and the Rockefellers and the Chases. You know, in that sense, it's, that's what the Great Depression was, a transfer of wealth. This is what this is, transfer of wealth. We'll lose the gain. So who is gaining? Well, the same people have been gaining all the time. Well, you and I lose because we have nothing. We had nothing. Now we have nothing minus nothing, you know? And uh, the uh, Goldman Sachs and Morgans and... Which, you know, when I, for example, when I, when I often talk about the, you know, the, the royalty, <coughs> be it 
English royalty or, or, or the Spanish royalty, in the end, you know, the, the queen of, of England, you know, the stupid little shrieking queen sitting on her gold throne with a stupid little crown, you know, she, she's it's just a metaphor for very powerful forces working behind her, you know, I mean, royalty is, you know, any fool can sit on a can, tin can on the streets, I am royalty, because there's only one royalty in the world, that's London. Okay, and in that sense, the real royalty, you know? But it's not, it's just, a, it's, it's a gigantic financial cartel working from behind the scenes. And in that sense, it's, you know, it's, it's more than demonstrated for people who understand how the world works. But to make things sure, that's yes. my thank you, thank you so much. Uh, when you say that uh, they want to destroy the world economy <coughs> to avoid losing the power. No, they want to destroy the world economy because we're living on a planet Earth with limited natural resources. So, uh, they want to save the world. No, they want to save, sell, save themselves, not the world. So they want to make sure that we, we, they kill us so they can save the natural resources because when you have so much water, so much you know, natural gas, so much oil, so much of everything, and we are almost 7 billion people, and the next plateau up is 10 billion people. All right, so 10 billion people on the planet just eat up all the natural resources a lot quicker. But the easiest way to kill people is to start a war. No, that's actually the most expensive way because in the 20th century, wars only killed 193 million people, and it's very, very expensive. I can tell you from personal experience that a you know, bullet costs about $5. So, it's how do you think they're going to do it? Well, it's much easier to starve people to death, you know, which is exactly what we're seeing right now. So, all, for example, all these people talking about you know, uh, FEMA concentration camps being built in America to, you know, to house all these millions. It doesn't make any sense because if you're going to, you're going to put people in concentration, you're going to have to give them food. You know, who, you know, you just, you understand what I'm saying? Which is like, you know, all this stupid logic of all these stupid conspiracy theories just falls apart. You know, you don't put people in a concentration camp if you're not going to feed them. And you're not going to put millions of people because it's expensive to feed them. So it doesn't make any sense. So they're going to crash the economy for everybody to stop? Well, they're destroying the world economy because without progress, without development, you see, <laughs> the only energy that can actually save the world is nuclear energy. So it, it, it's, it's, a question of, it's a question of immortality. You see, these are higher kind of uh, uh, moral questions that go far beyond what we're talking about here because, again, this is really not important. You know, why are we here? You know, what is the objective of governments to the people? What is our objective, you know, the role and responsibility to future generations? You know, it's to ensure the survival of the human species. And the only way we can do this, you know, now to 500,000 years from now, is to discover, you know, outer space. We have to go to the moon, we have to, we have to go to the moon, we have to go to Mars, we have to colonize other planets because there's just too many people. And the only way you can do this, you know, is through human minds. See, people think that, you know, money makes the world go around. You've heard the phrase, money, the lead, right? But money has no intrinsic value. It doesn't make the world go around. It's the human mind makes the world go around. In that sense, the difference between us and animals, although a lot of people in the world look like animals and they act like animals, but the real difference between us and animals is our ability to discover universal physical principles of nature, which improves the lives of people per square kilometer of space over nature. And that's what the circles around Gottfried Leibniz, the discoverer of calculus, realized 250 years ago that progress and development is directly proportional to population density. So the more we develop as nation states, the more we're going to have and the more of us we're going to have. And people like Rockefeller and company, they don't want this, which is why they're destroying the economy and which is why they're cutting progress, which is again, it's all, you know, physically logical. You know, if you take the physical space time, you know, element. But again, from an intellectual point of view, not from a freaky, you know, conspiracy, crazy point of view. Okay. Thank you. I think there's a lot of people that want to Oh, God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. I got to do this.